How you doing, YouTube? Matt. Matt some beer reviews. Back with yet another review. Another mystery beer. Oh, the mystery beers. How I love thee. Yeah. Look at this sucker. That's some pizzazz on this one. Um, this mystery beer comes courtesy of Pat. Thank you very much. Pat out in Vegas. He sent me off a beer mail. A couple different beers in there. But he sent me one mystery beers. This little sucker wrapped up here. Excited to dive into it. Here we go. What do we know about mystery beers? Um... Yeah, I know nothing about them. They're wrapped up. This one has this uh, nice uh, coating of um, industrial duct tape. Not duct tape as in like the stuff that most people have, like the stuff you put on industrial vents. And some sweet tissue paper from a present that uh, might have been given or not given. I do not know. So anyway, I love the labeling. That's probably one of the more ghettoist labeled mystery beers I've ever gotten. And that kind of excites me. So... Let's pop this cap off. You can cover the little cap with your little uh, little design there. See if I can pour this in, see what she's got. Okay. <laughs> what do we have going on here, my friends? We have, um, kind of looks like a old school kind of double IPA. Could be a Belgian golden. Um, could be a sour beer for all I know. Uh, index finger. Uh, infinite creamy up top, super tight compact bubbles, a little bit of dirty glass mafia going on, uh, but not that much. And like I said, it's got a rich golden hue to it, subtle haze, soft carbonation, nothing too crazy. See if I got a nose on her. I have had this beer before. I have absolutely 100% had this beer before. Uh, it's it's an IPA or double IPA. I think it's a double IPA. Man, it's just rich. Um, like apricot, uh, a little bit of kind of like a sweet citrus in there, uh, even a little bit of just like soft, soft kind of kiwi sweetened kind of tropical fruit, but there's a resinous vibe on the other end of things too. You can add a little bit of soft, sweet pininess, nothing too bittering in the nose, but it's got that rich double IPA. It kind of reminds me of like two hearted, but not, no, it's definitely got a two hearted vibe, maybe even like a racer five kind of vibe. I think it's an old school beer. I think this is one of the ones, the OG kind of uh, IPA slash double IPA beers that were out there. Just rich, sweet malt that lends itself to that nice, sweet, kind of juicy citrus with that bit of stone fruitiness on top of that. You get that soft kind of bittering um, with a little bit of piney or decent amount of kind of like resinous dankness kind of thrown on the uh, bits and pieces around the whole things in bunch. Those are words and descriptors, right? But yeah, old school, single, probably double IPA. Let's dive in. Cheers. A huge bittering component to it. Big, dank, resinous pineiness. That citrus is coming to a head. Just huge sweetness. I mean, this has got to be up there. Eight, nine percent alcohol. This is guys. It's it's got to be too hearted, right? It's got to be. Yeah, I mean, it's just a big, huge double IPA. Old school in styling. Got that big West Coast bittering component and nice, sweet um, fruitiness coming in there. Uh, it, it is, it's in that vein, but uh, it's too hard, man. It's got to be, right? <laughs> Much of be, it's going to be, um, it's going to be a Pilsner. Yeah, I don't even go any further because you know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? It's, it's that beer, so. God damn, how am I going to open this sucker? Just, uh. This metal tape is not meant to be removed. Oh. You figure I'd just be able to kind of yank on this tissue paper and get rid of it, but I kind of want to unwrap it with a little bit of pizzazz because I think I'm right. And if I'm not right, eh, what are you going to do? But even if I'm not right, I know it's one of those beers. God, it's sticking everywhere now. Um, do I have, here you go. Yeah. Utility knife. That will help get things done. There we go. Do, 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 do. Oh, it's like unwrapping in the most fancy present, uh, present ever. Ooh, there was a label up top, it looks like. It looks like you removed it. Um, do, 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 do. God damn it, come on. Okay. You know, this is not a surprise, because what we have going on here is Sculpin. Um, we have uh, Sculpin. I, I, it could be Grapefruit Sculpin, but I think it's just base Sculpin. 
Oh, no, it's not. Yeah. Oh, it's Aloha Sculpin. There you go. Um, yeah, I mean, it pretty much has uh, Aloha Hazy India Pale Ale. Um, it's pretty much what I thought it was. I mean, like I said, it's kind of got those two hearted vibes. It got that rich kind of uh, citrusy sweetness. Then it has that nice West Coasty dank, big, huge, bitter component on it. You're talking about a hazy version of it. Eh, it's hazy, but it's not the most haziest beer in the history of mankind. I think two hearted is usually around that, that, um, that level of kind of haziness. Uh, da, 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 da. I mean, they call a called Aloha Sculpin. Juicy tropical notes from Brux. Tro okay, see, I did not get that. There's a Brux yeast in here. You know, there's such a bittering component in there. You know, it doesn't really come off all that Bruxy to me. I get it with a little bit of dryness. Brux yeast is typically just kind of like somewhere between... Your regular yeast and what everybody's doing their broad IPAs now. It's going to be a bit drier, a bit more showy yeast-wise, but not necessarily um, coming off. God, I'm going to have this goddamn metal shit stuck to me for forever. Not as showy, um, I guess you would say, as the brut and the dryness of the things. While well, at the same time, not necessarily as uh, kind of just there for the ride as uh, like a new school kind of London 3 or like Conan or something like that. Um, it, typically, it's a bit more sh uh, uh, present when I've had them on IPAs, there's been a couple of people on the East Coast that's actually made Brux based IPAs. Uh, Russian Duck is one of my favorite ones. Um, Kane is another one. So, yeah, I didn't get that component of it. But, yeah, it just comes off as like that big old school kind of double IPA in a West Coast variety. You're talking about your two hearted, you're talking about your sculpin in general, those kind of beers. That's how it came off to me. Definitely came off a little bit more candid fruity um, uh, than I remembered. But at the same time, you know. A lot of these old school double IPAs, when I go back to them, tend to come off a little bit sweeter, tend to come off a little bit more kind of candied than I remember them being. So I thought it maybe it was just my brain doing playing tricks on me. But yeah, it's a taste beer. It's a nice beer. That hazy kind of Brux component, now that I think about it, sure, there's a little bit more to it. There's a little bit more body, a little bit more kind of flabbiness to the beer. Um, but all in all, you know. So quick to judge, yet so close to being right, yet so close to being very, very wrong. Somewhere in the middle. So I'm okay with what I said. Um, and again, just that I think it's a style of the beer. What, what are this? ABV-wise. 7%, so it's a little lower than I thought it would be. Um, the style of beer helped or kept me from kind of dialing in, I think, on that Brox part of it. But yeah. It's nice. It's tasty. I dig it. Never been the biggest Ballast Point guy in the world. Same time, they definitely know their way around their kind of West Coasty kind of IPAs. So if them to throw a Brux thing in there for uh, for a bit of a, a bit of a kind of a what's the word I'm looking for? A trick. It's kind of fun, but I don't see it showing as up as much as I've had in other beers. Uh, so let's talk about it. One of the better West Coast double IPAs that I've had as of late, or just an IPA, I guess they're just gonna call it, right? Yeah, not a double IPA. Better. One of the more better, there you go, uh, IPAs that I've had as late West Coast style. That's tasty. It's nice. I can't think of that many, so I would default to that. But it's it, it's probably one of the better Ballast Points beer I've had in a while, to be perfectly honest with you. Value and availability, uh, no idea. Who sent to me? Maybe Pat can chime in and leave you with, if you like what we like this. If you like Sculpt and you want it to be a little bit hazier and just slight bit drier, because that's pretty much what you're going to get here. That Brux is going to do the work, make it just a little bit drier. You're going to get that kind of nice, soft palate feel from that kind of haziness. And top of that, and then you're just going to get that kind of familiar kind of West Coast with a big bittering component that uh, pretty much mean these guys uh, king shit of fuck mountain. The beer itself, not necessarily Ballast Point, for uh, for years. Yeah, double IPAs like these ruled the roost for the longest time. And uh, they probably are still king shit of fuck mountain out west, but, you know, being East Coasters, we're kind of spoiled. So what are you going to do? So there you go. Another review in the books down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers. If you want to check me out doing the social media stuff, beer massive. If you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting stuff, hopefully you guys enjoyed your review. Hopefully you're enjoying a nice little hazy mystery beer right now. Thank you very much, Pat. Hopefully see you next time. Cheers.